I don't like to be overly negative when I do a review. Like, being overly negative is something I do not want to do. Because back when I was younger, I did reviews. Sometimes I could be a bit of a smart ass. And I was kind of pompous when it came to things. And then you go back and you read those overviews now. You're kind of like, well, that wasn't really the way to do this. So I try not to be too negative. But I'm going to be a little negative today. Because we are reviewing The Dark and the Wicked. Now, this is uh, apparently Shudder had something to do with it. It's got a Shudder tag on it here. It's from RLJE Films. It's on Blu-ray. Uh, Blade Disgusting and all those people seem to like it if you read the back of the box here. But but me personally, not so much. And the thing is, it was just so slow. That's one problem I had. There's, there's a lot of time that they're trying, to, they're, they're trying their best to be really creepy. But it doesn't really work. Of course, the plot is, is this guy's on his deathbed. And his kids kind of come home you know, for that. Even though the mom's saying, don't come home. And the daughter, I think she was the one that's been like gone the longest. So she comes and she's kind of like the, the star, her and her brother. But things start happening that's very weird. And you would think it has nothing to do with, you know, what's supposed to be going on. But then things kind of tie together and things get just super weird. And I feel like I couldn't help but think while watching this that this movie was trying its best to be like Hereditary. Like, not every movie can be like Hereditary and Midsommar and all those movies, but that doesn't stop a lot of these indie films from trying to be, which this is the same director as The Strangers, by the way. This is Brian uh, Bert Bertino, I believe is how you pronounce it. So when I read that, I had high hopes. But I seen what we were dealing with, not so much. And I'm not going to say there isn't some very bad, like, you know, not bad in a bad way, but like there's some good gore move moments here, and there's some things that happen that are kind of startling. But then... There's things that happen that just drag on. It's like not every movie has to be like, you know, an hour and 40 minutes. Not every movie has to be. But these days, so many movies are. And something like this, I feel like, could have benefited from shaving off 10, 15 minutes. At least. And there, there's things that happen that are, that are unsettling. And maybe if they happen more frequently, you know, you could say more better things about this. More be more better better things about this but the way it is it's just it's a sluggish pace and things kind of get a little predictable near the end and you kind of see where this is going before it gets there and you know it just it just slugs its way to the finish line like the last 10 minutes of this thing just drags and when you reach what what happens you're like well figured that was going to happen so it's nothing new it, it's trying to be elevated but it just it's just boring so uh, giving it a 2 out of 5, and I would not recommend this one. I uh, hate to be that way, but would not recommend it. It has a Fantasia Q&A with Marion Ireland and Michael Abbott Jr. I'm assuming that's the, the leads. Um, you know, it's it, it's Shutter had something to do with it. Got a nice little slip case. Uh, no no Shutter code for a free 30-day trial with this one for some reason. My mailman must, must have seen it and not liked it before he sent it to me because... He kind of did a job of, of banging this thing up. But, as you can see with my creases and bends here. But, The Dark and the Wicked, it's a nice try to be elevated. But, it's just low-level slacking and dull. Two out of five, I'd say don't bother. 